Brands on Brands. Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? This week, we're talking about super easy ways to fill your content calendar all year. Check it out. In a world where advertising is ignored, business is exposed, and the only constant is change, how do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands on Brands, a home for those who think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here's your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, 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 welcome to Brands on Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal marketing coach, and I believe that building a brand that matters is the only way for your business to thrive tomorrow. I appreciate you guys being here. Today, today we are talking about super easy ways to fill your content calendar all year. That's right. How do you create more new content in your niche, in your industry, in your field? We're going to talk about all those ways you can come up with new content, refresh your content, extrapolate and bring those ideas to bear that fill your content calendar. Because I know if you're anything like me, I'm always looking for new ways to keep the idea is coming, and that's what we're here for today. If you would like to refer back to any of the lessons, the specific lessons from today's episode, it's all right there for you, brandsonbrands.com forward slash 130. That's brandsonbrands.com forward slash 130 for the full blog and downloadable resources. Brands on Brands. All right, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. Super easy ways to fill your content calendar all year long. Excited to talk about this today because creating content, well, it's not easy. In fact, creating content can be really hard. And one of the hardest things is coming up with these ideas. And it's easy to lose motivation for creating this content when you don't have a consistent flow of ideas. Your audience is counting on you to be consistent. The reason they tune in each week is because they expect you to deliver more new content. You need to create great habits to keep that content flowing. And here are my three favorite habits for you to develop. The first is add clarity. The second is dive deeper. And the third is share remixes. And we'll talk about what each of those mean. So again, it's add clarity, dive deeper, share remixes. These are the easy ways to fill your content calendar all year. So let's dive into add clarity first. Whenever you've created something already, especially if you've been podcasting or creating YouTube channel videos or blogs, if you've already been creating, looking backwards is a great way to create things forward. What I mean is you should be looking at your old content to source ideas. So when I say add clarity, the first place you can do that is to reflect on some of your old content. and. For example, when I wanted to talk about my personal branding framework in episode 74, I actually brought back a quote from episode one, and I shared quotes from an interview I did to really hone and hammer in the point that I was trying to make in the episode. I shared two clips from a previous episode, and I reflected on what those clips meant to me and the information and the insight that I derived from those clips. And I used it to form my whole episode. And you can do that too. So you can look back at your old content, reflect on it, and add clarity to your audience around the point that you're trying to make in this new piece of content. That's one way to add clarity. Another would be to reflect on past experiences, not just past content, but past experiences. Look back on the things that you had gone through and that you've now overcome. Don't just talk about things that are happening right now that you're still struggling with. I'd prefer you look back on the things that you'd struggle with a year ago or two or three or five years ago and add clarity to that. Say, this is something I struggled with that you might be struggling with too, that I got past. And by the way, here are some ways that I got past it. Here are some solutions that I found, some resources that I used, a mindset that I had that helped me to help me get through it. Reflect on those past experiences. And as you take time to think about it, Write them down so you can use them and share them, not just in your content, but also when you are out there creating PR for your business or you're out there networking and meeting new people. You'll have stories to pull from and those stories 
really connect you to people because it lets them know that you've been where they are and they might need to work with you or listen to you to get past it too, to solve that same problem. So reflect on your past experiences. And the third way to add clarity would be to reflect on current events. Look at things happening right now in the world, in your industry, or to other people that are are having similar problems as your customers and reflect on those current events and say, what can we learn from what's happening right now? What are some takeaways or some practices we can apply to something happening right now? And how do we learn from those current events and take your experience and add it to it so that you have a perspective, you have an opinion. People want to know, based on what's happening right now that's relevant to me right now, what would your opinion be? And you might be the one that gets to help them through that thing that's happening that's real right now in their life because you brought it to them in this context of something that's happening to everyone right now or to someone in their business right now. So add clarity can be really powerful uh, in terms of creating new content. And it simply requires you to look inwards and backwards into your past experiences, into current events, and to old content and bring that forward and find ways to provide clarity in terms of advice or solutions. All right, that's the first one. The second way to fill your content calendar all year is to dive deeper. The first was add clarity, the second is dive deeper, and the third is share remixes. So let's talk about diving deeper. This could simply be you asking a new question based on an old topic, a topic that you may have already covered. Listen to your old stuff. A great way to get better at producing content is to listen, watch, and read your old content and ask new questions. There are some simple questions, whether it's who, what, where, when, why, or how to, that you can ask about a topic you may have already covered. For example, if the topic is podcasting and your first deep dive was, or your first piece of content was about why you should create a podcast, a way to take that piece of content and make it new and create something new and dive deeper is to ask a new question. Well, instead of why should you create a podcast, look at one of these other questions. Who, for example, who should be creating podcasts? Who are podcasts great for helping? Or what? What is a great podcast? Or for some people, what is a podcast? (laughs) And why is it important? Or another great question for this particular one would be how to, how to create a podcast. So for the people out there that know why they want to create one, they want to take that next step, what would you do to get started? What would you do to get through the process top to bottom? All those how-to questions. So every topic you've covered in the past may have new questions you can ask that provide new information that you didn't cover the first time. So ask a new question on an old topic. That's the first step in diving deeper. And you know what? Those are just five simple questions. You want to really dive deep on questions? I have a great resource for you. There's a website called answerthepublic.com, answerthepublic.com. If you go to that website, It asks the questions for you based on Google searches and it populates it with the most asked questions regarding your keywords. So if your keyword was podcasting, like in the previous demonstration, it will tell you all the different questions that people are asking on Google about that right now. Not only that, it also will dive into other types of queries or searches that are happening regarding that topic, whether it's using different types of words like articles that start the flow of a question or the word like versus, it might say, okay, podcasting versus YouTube or something like that. Uh, It will give you examples of all those types of questions. In fact, I did a search for you about podcasting or actually about the word content calendar since that's what this is about. So if I dove deeper on content calendar, here are some of the questions that pop up on Answer the Public. Why content calendar? How to build content calendar? How to plan content calendar? How does content calendar work? What is marketing content calendar? What is social media content calendar? Why have a content calendar? Why is a content calendar important? All these questions could be new pieces of content that I could be answering. The second is prepositions. It gives you prepositions. So the preposition to can be used. uh, And it says to, within that, it says content calendar in Asana, content calendar for LinkedIn, content calendar for Facebook. And here's some more content calendar is or content calendar with for so content calendar with Trello, with Instagram, with bloggers. And it goes on and on and on. And or here's four, like it uses the article for the preposition for content calendar for Facebook, content calendar for a social media template. And this might give you new ideas. 
And then there's a comparison section. So it'll say content calendars versus editorial calendars, content calendars and marketing. So what the comparatives are. And then it even goes in this alphabetical way. So if you're looking for a clever way to use letters or figure out other words that might be involved, say I wanted to know a word that started with C that was connected to content calendars. It tells me content calendar creator, content calendar creation, content calendar Canva, content calendar checklist, content calendar categories, all these C words that connect to the word content calendar. And it has for every letter in the alphabet, there's something that it'll show you if it's something that people search for. If I chose the word O, it would be content calendar outline, content calendar online, content calendar on Excel. I think you get the picture. How useful is that? All these words that you might be racking your brain for, it does the work for you based on real searches that people are doing. Very powerful tool. And I just suggest that each of you check it out, try it, try something different. So again, that's answerthepublic.com. Again, so we're in the topic of diving deeper here. How to you know dive deeper is one of the, the answers to the question, how do you fill your content calendar? So the first way was add clarity. The second is dive deeper. And one way to dive deeper is ask a new question. Another way to dive deeper is to zoom in on a singular niche topic of interest. So what I mean by this is take something that is one piece of something you've already talked about and really hone in and dive deep on that niche topic. So to continue with the answer of uh, podcasting, for example, if I wanted to dive deep on a topic, I'd say, well, you know, what do you need to create a podcast? Well, microphones. What if I dove deep and just did a full episode about microphones and all the different types that are out there and why you should use them and how to use them and what brands to buy and how to plug them in and whatever that is. Each of those could even be its own niche topic of interest. But the point is to go really deep and answer every single question you can about one singular niche topic that's of interest to your people. And you can figure that out by asking them, what are the things you're interested in? Or looking at the questions that they ask and say, okay, well, how can I provide the most thorough answer as possible that dives really deep on just this one thing? So this is about depth instead of breadth. A lot of people will maybe cover a lot of topics at once, just very shallowly uh, or in a shallow way. And this would be the opposite. This is just picking one thing and really focusing on just that thing the whole time and not getting distracted by other things you could talk about. The third way to dive deeper would be to provide a roadmap of some sort from beginning to end. So how do you take someone from where they are to the end of the journey, step by step? What are the steps involved? And that could be for anything. It could be for something simple, something medium, or something very complicated. What is the roadmap from beginning to end, step by step? That's one great way to dive deeper as well. A third way, so if we are back on this track of how do we fill our content calendar all year, one is add clarity, two is dive deeper. The third is share remixes. So what do I mean by share remixes? Well, if you look at all the things you've created in the past, you have this deep well of things that some of it worked, some of it didn't. And the best thing you can do is to find out how to use it again. In some cases, it might be straight up just reposting the thing that's created in its entirety. Maybe you just add a new intro to it based on the current day and sharing the reason why you're sharing that top piece of content. Repost it. Now, For a podcast, I can look back and say, what are the most popular episodes that people listen to, but that people really responded to? And I could just handpick the most popular and share them again, because if they are popular once, someone new tuning in that didn't tune in six months ago or a year ago might really want to hear that content and hadn't found it because they never, you know, took the time to look through 120 episodes. So I can help curate and share with them my own best content and repost that based on not my opinion, but based on the popularity of it that you know was proven by the listeners. So repost your top episodes. I actually try to do that towards the end of every season. I try to pick two, three, or four top episodes to reshare them out so that my newest listeners can hear some of my oldest, best content. Do the work for them. Don't make them find the diamond in the rough. Just share your diamonds with them right from the start. Another way was to share remixes is to mash up a topic with related clips. So think about how much of your content you create is related to each other. Even though you have maybe one general theme for your show, there might be these many themes that end up surfacing. And if you look back, you can actually categorize and tag each episode as talking about a certain type of topic. And then you can mash that up. So for example, for me, one of the topics I talk about a lot is personal branding. So I might be able to go back and say, what are five, six, seven episodes that all talked about personal branding? How can I bring those together? and mash them up. Or 
maybe there's a question I ask certain guests that all tend to be related to each other. And if I can find those answers, I can bring a guest's answer forward and say, these are what five people I've interviewed have said about the topic of X, Y, Z. And I can present that. And what does my guest get? Well, they get the opinions all on one field or one topic from leaders in the industry all in one place that they can download and say, you know, God, you know, out of these five, these three or four are really useful. I never even thought of that. And I didn't have to listen to all these episodes to figure it out. You brought it to me. That's the power of a mashup. So bring all that together, combine them in a related way, tie them together. And then if you want to add your own insight to it too, tell people why you chose these and what you loved about them and maybe add your own. So you're also an expert adding on top of and being related to all these other experts talking about that thing. Mashups can be really powerful. So that's another way to share a remix. The third and last way to share a remix would be curate other people's content and then add your perspective. There's oftentimes, you know, most of us are not in a, in a bubble, right? We are reading things. We are listening to shows. We are watching videos all the time. Even if you're a content creator, you are usually consuming other people's content too. It doesn't have to be just for you. If something affected you and you really enjoyed different opinions from different people, why not highlight them? Why not say, you know what? I really enjoyed these three episodes or the, these three shows. And here's why. And why don't you go check them out? Or here's my three favorite books or here's my three favorite podcasts. Share them out and let other people discover them as well. And guess what? The people you're sharing will also, you know, might, they might notice that you're doing that and appreciate it. Especially if you have peers in your industry that you're pulling from. If you say, Hey, by the way, I mentioned you as one of my top 10 shows. They might really appreciate that and shout you out as well to their audience. So a great way to create new content and build some momentum behind your brand is to share other people's content and add your perspective to it. Now, don't just share an episode and plagiarize it. That's not what I'm talking about. But letting people know, here are some great resources for you. It might be a great way to go. So that's the third way. Uh, Again, super easy ways to fill your content calendar all year round. This is hopefully something that you guys have struggled with. I know I've struggled with it. And as I've tried different ways to approach it, these have been the three that if ever I'm in a funk and I'm hitting a wall on creating content, these tend to be the three that I go to the most. So, and I, well, here's another way to think about it. Here's a bonus, right? If you are thinking about how do you design your season, maybe you just plan this up front and you say, hey, I want to make sure that at every season I include a couple of old episodes, a couple of remixes, a couple of deep dives, and you just have your editors go through and do that for you. And you can add your perspective on the top of it. If you plan that up front, then that's one way you won't ever hit a wall is because you've already got these episodes coming and you don't have to think about it in the, on the moment you've planned ahead for it and built it into your mix, right? Great way to fill your calendar. Well, if you'd like to create more content in your niche and fill your calendar all year long, be sure to leverage these three topics we spoke about today. Add clarity, dive deeper, share remixes. There are always new ways to tackle content. I hope that these tactics that we shared today were helpful. If you enjoyed the show, guys, please support me. Take a screen grab, tag me on Instagram at Brandon Berkmeyer, and I will be sure to comment on that and be a part of your world as well. I do, as always, appreciate you guys for listening. You guys are what make this worth doing, and I hope that this is supportive and helpful for you. So thank you for listening, and I will catch you guys next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands on Brands. But we have plenty more ways to not just help you build a business, but build a brand. Head over to brandandbrands.com for more resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit brandandbrands.com.